Hey, coffee lovers, Mark and AJ here from Whole Latte Love. Today we're going to take you through our tasting of six different Maromas coffees. Yep. Uh, we did all the tasting and stuff. We'll tell you at the end. We'll talk about three, our three favorites. Doesn't yep. mean they have to be yours. We'll talk about why that is. Uh, but AJ, take us through the process of how we do our tasting here. Yeah, so we've got six different beans from uh, Maromas here. And we dialed them all in individually on the Chiado E37 SD grinder. We chose to single those so that we could have them all kind of isolated without any impacts from previous beans in the chamber, things like that. And then we pulled shots on the Bedzera Matrix MN. It's the manual extraction version. Um, and split the shots so we could each try it and, and dialed them all into a, a, a one to two ratio, 18 grams in, 36 grams out roughly 25 to 30 seconds on each of them, uh, mm -hmm. just as kind of like our baseline standard for that. And the Matrix, we're wearing the Bedzera swag here, right? Yeah. Yep. It's a nice nice dual boiler machine. It's got the really cool color changing panels if you're into that sort of thing. Um, I've got that snake logo. You've got, I've got the, the lever machine. The classic lever. lever. You know, Bedzera, one of the oldest manufacturers. In fact, probably the oldest manufacturer of espresso machine. Started way back in 1901. Um, and before we get into the tasting, we got a little Maroma swag too, right? Yep. We've got we've got the uh, frothing pitcher here, nice twenty ounce frothing pitcher, uh, kind of understated, but a nice finish on that. Got a uh, tamper and little rubber tamper stand, and then I really think this is cool. You know, if you got a coffee, somebody's really into espresso, um, the little porta filter, bottomless porta filter yeah. keychain nice over key here, chain. and then over on this bag here, we've got the Maroma's bag clip because we often talk about. One of the best ways to store your coffee is just in the bag, but that's assuming you can seal it with a clip or some of them have um, Ziploc kind of seal on it. But yeah, this bag clip, brand yeah. your coffee bag with a branded clip. And then we have one more. So we've got a little special guest. We're going to have Austin come in. We've got the very cool Maromas barista apron. I think you're going to have to get right over here. Give us a little model, yes, right? Ladies and gentlemen, this is real leather. you got got pockets to put your rags put your brushes, and it's comfortable too. Thanks. Comfortable. <laughs> really, really nice, cool barista apron there. Now he's going back behind the camera because yeah. he's also running the show behind the scenes. <laughs> work. Okay, so we're gonna go right down the line here. We'll talk about the coffees. Now, if you've been watching my videos, we're gonna start out with one of my all-time favorites, Maroma's Orphe. And I know this is not your favorite of the bunch here. Nope, nope, I like it a lot, but it's not my number one. So, uh, you know, I do talk about this coffee a lot. It's got, it's very, very chocolatey, incredibly easy to work with, you know, not expensive at all. It's like 10 bucks a pound. Um, been drinking it for years, not just as espresso, uh, but as long coffees. Um, I like it in milk drinks because of the chocolatey stuff. You don't so much, but we'll talk about that, sure. right? Uh, well, yeah, let's, why, why is it that maybe for you, because you do the latte art, right? Yeah, Orphea makes a ton of crema. And it, it looks awesome, it tastes great, but for latte art, sometimes for me, it's a little too thick to pour into. Mm -hmm. So if I'm drinking it as espresso, great. If I'm making Americano, great. But if I'm doing a latte art on a latte, I'll generally go with a different bean. And I mean, this is a coffee, I call it buckets of crema is what it mm -hmm. makes. A lot of people really like that. In fact, this is a coffee, you dial this in 18 in, 36 out. And I get this question all the time about volumes and people trying to compare weights and volumes because yeah. this coffee, when you do 36 grams out, you're probably going to get, if it's dialed in right, you're probably going to get over two ounces, over 60 milliliters of volume, including that crumb in the cup. Right. And for some other beans, even the same 36 grams, the same weight will be an ounce and a half or even less, depending on how dense that foam is and, and the, the nature of the coffee. So just goes to show you how different a coffee can be. Mm -hmm. Now, so, you know, what, I, what else I'll tell you about this? Again, one of my favorites, incredibly easy to work with, very chocolatey, very smooth, Never, I really never get any bitterness out of this, which is you sometimes get with some some of the classic, the darker mm -hmm. roasts especially. Most all of these are kind of what I'd consider more in the medium range. Yeah, yeah. But anyhow, so let's let's move on down. Let's just start with the. Uh, we're going to take a look at the Arabia here. Yeah. So this is the Maroma's Arabia. Uh, the taste. We took tasting notes on all these as we went, so we can yeah. remember. But my notes on it was it was smoky, chocolatey, a little bit of sweetness to it. Uh, soft, mild acidity and kind of a, a medium body. How about you? I mean, that, that's kind of where I was. I, I noted maybe just some hints of winey flavors yeah. in there a little bit, um, but sweet and smoky. So a smoky, winey sort of thing. Um, I, I, to me, it was a little, you know, it had a nice clean finish and thin in the aftertaste area. Um, 
and I consider the body maybe just a little bit lighter mm -hmm. than, than you may have. But uh, all in all, oh, and another thing. So we, as we dial these all in, remember, grind size is never set and forget because yeah. we were changing grind size throughout all of these to get them dialed in. And in fact, it was a relatively large change from the Orphea to the Arabia, which isn't surprising being this is a bit of a uh, Arabica Robusta blend, mm -hmm. blend excuse me, uh, really nice Robusta in here that gives it all those qualities. And this 100% this Arabica is totally different, so you're really changing grind size. Yeah, and this, even though it is 100% Arabica, it didn't have some of the, the attributes that I normally associate with yeah. Arabica. It, it wasn't super bright up front, it wasn't, um, it definitely wasn't sour, it wasn't bitter, but it was kind of right in the middle there which I normally get a little more out of a blend than a 100% Arabica. But a, ve but a very different coffee than say the yeah. Orphea. Yep, totally. All right, so moving on. Um, we, well, we, we're not gonna reveal what we like so much yet, <laughs> but the, uh, the, the Maromas Gold here. Uh, tell me what you thought about this one. Uh, this one I liked a lot, and it may end up in my top three, just a little spoiler. Maybe, oh. But uh, <laughs> um, it, it kind of had some floral fruity notes up front. Uh, but the taste, the taste was rich and clean and smooth. You still got a little bit of that fruitiness. It tasted fresh and, and just delicious. <laughs> and it's 100% Arabica again, yep. right? And yeah, the grind wasn't, we, it wasn't a huge grind size change between these two, mm -hmm. um, which not incredibly surprising that it wasn't, given that they're kind of the same variety, really, right. but different beans. Um, for me, I, you know, I said it was very, it had a nice smooth acidity. Um, a medium body, so it had more body than some of the other coffees we mm -hmm. were doing. Nothing, not close to the Orphea. No. But, uh, but uh, is that one you think you could you could use for for latte art? Yeah, I would say this one probably is the most versatile of the bunch. I, I, you could use it for anything. I mean, the crema was there and it was it was nice and formed, but it mm -hmm. wasn't thick like the Maromas was. I could you could definitely pour into that. Okay, and then next up. You know, if you're into the, you know, the more of the social responsibility mm -hmm. sort of thing, the fair trade, the organic stuff, uh, this is a new coffee from Maromas, or at least for us, yeah. from, from Maromas. It's uh, organic and fair trade um, certified. Um, tell me your thoughts on this guy. So this one, the, the body was a little bit lighter, almost thin. Mm -hmm. um, Flavor-wise, uh, right when you took us, if you said it was woody, and I yeah. got that as well. It was woody, cedary, almost leathery, but in a good way. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, it had that just kind of like that tangible wood taste to it. <laughs> yeah, and you know what, I think that brings up a good point, right? Is that, you know, I have, I have my taste. There's some like some really high-end Yerga chefs that are super berry, you know, just bursting with berries, mm -hmm. and then a more chocolatey coffee like this. And, and I, like, I like each, but you know, I'm not totally married to, to one, right. but I think really the only way that you can discover what you are really into is to try things that are completely different. So always be trying new coffee. I mean, no problem having your favorites, right? right. I know yeah, of course. you have other favorites as well, yep. uh, but it always helps to try other things so you'll know what you like. And on that note too, the way we're standardizing this with the 18 in 36 out isn't necessarily the best Right. recipe for all of these coffees too. I mean, we're doing that just so we have a baseline, yeah. but there are, you could take any of these and tweak them based on that starting point and make them better and better as you go. Um, what may be best for the Orphea may not be best for one of the other ones. That, that, that's a really good point. And right along with that, different brew methods too. Yeah. Yep. And there, there are no espresso beans. There are right. beans a roaster may put together and kind of intend that they get used as espresso, but you can, you can brew an espresso with any bean and mm -hmm. you can, brew a long coffee or you know whatever you want with any sort of bean. Yep. So, all right, so moving on, we're up to the Marmia. Yeah, what'd you think of this one? Um, so this one, you know, I got, it had a more of an earthy flavor to it for me. Um, a, a lot of, some tobacco in there. Um, very, again, this one was very different than, you know, my, my kind of Orphea kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it had a nice medium body to it. How yeah. about you? Uh, for this one, again, yeah, that earthiness, it definitely tasted a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. um, I, had, I had hints of chocolate, almost tobacco, smoky. It, I probably wouldn't drink this one that much as espresso, but I could see it being really good in a milk-based drink. And yeah. that's just my own taste preference for this kind of bean. And that, I mean, and that's something, you, you know, if you do a lot of milk drinks, you're going to find that some, 
some coffees are going to do better in milk mm -hmm. than other. And so, you know, like if you're doing a latte art, especially, you wouldn't use your fee, although right. I would love it in a milk drink because it it's tastes so good. chocolatey. Yeah. It tastes really good. It's just hard to do art on. Yeah. Yeah. I think this one would taste really good and the sweetness of the milk would really bring out the flavors in the coffee as well. That, that is a, that's a great point. Um, let's go down to the Platinea and tell me what you thought here. Uh, this one uh, was probably the brightest of the bunch. It, it tastes, it was, uh, I had that it uh, had like a berry-ish, whiny, fruit-like flavor to it. Um, a little bit of acidity up front, kind of tangy. Mm -hmm. um, and then the aftertaste, I had clean, rounded, and whiny. <laughs> I did, I did, I got a little spicy mm -hmm. <laughs> out of it. Um, definitely I got some of those fruit flavors, not surprising. It's 100% Arabica uh, coffee, so, so that's good. It had a, just a slight acidity, you know, if you get some of those really, really super fresh, you know, high altitude coffees, that's, the acidity is gonna go way up, right. you know, and really bite you off the top. Um, didn't have that at all like this. And just, you know, I got a little bit of the, the chocolate out of this, mm -hmm. not, not as much as Orfea, um, but, I really like this coffee. And now we did say we were gonna tell you about our three favorites, right? Yep, yep. So you, you wanna go first? Sure. Okay. Uh, so number three coming in was uh, Orphea for me. We've had it around forever and it's, it's, <laughs> it's in my <laughs> top three, it's number bit. three. Number two, I had the gold. And then number one, I had the Platinea. And now it's interesting, we came up with the same top three, but in different orders. Yep. Um, so my, my number three, was the gold, um, liked that a lot. The Platinea, uh, that was my number two, and you know, if you hadn't guessed already, <laughs> the way I talk about it, it was your Fia. But I really do, you know, I owe it to myself, you owe it to yourself, to really try some, some other coffees and, and find out if there you know, isn't something else that, you know, if you stick with the same thing all the time, and I don't drink Orphea 100%, believe me. <laughs> um, but if you stick with the same thing all the time, you're never going to know. You know, it's kind of like wine, right? Right. You know, some people like a super sweet red or something. And I mean, you know, I like a super dry white wine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and you, you don't have to like what I like. I don't have to like what you like. We, you know, you got to find what you like, right? Yeah. So. But we both like those top three. So if you're going to try them, that's a good place to start. Yeah, and I think you know, and I think I think the other ones are definitely worth a go. And I think you know, if you really want to try something completely different, um, or if you're into the fair trade and organic stuff, you want to you know support the farmers mm -hmm. and you want to do organic. Um, definitely, the uh, fair trade and organic is worth a try. And again, you know, if you want to go opposite ends of the spectrum, you know, maybe the Platinea or the Orphea against the Marmia, something like that. Yeah. Um, and a good middle of the road. You know, we both really like the gold a lot. Um, so there you go. Yeah. Now, as always, if you have any questions about these coffees or anything coffee, of course, AJ, we're always down in those comments. Yep. We're more than happy to give you opinions or assistance on anything. Any last thoughts on these before we leave? No, I, I'm just excited to try them all with different preparation methods, different brew methods, and in milk drinks and kind of experiment with tweaking all of them to make them as, as good as they can be. Yeah, I mean, we do have to, I mean, we gotta have that, that base and compare yeah. apples to apples a little bit. So yeah. we do prep them all the same and that's really, you know, maybe they shouldn't be and you can tune them up a little mm -hmm. bit, change your brew temperatures or ratios, right. that kind of thing, and maybe get something more out of each. So, uh, well, we really thank you guys for joining us. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, we do invite you to do that. Uh, Mark? And I'm AJ. And we'll see you back here soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.